Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another devlog for Dauphin. I'm kicking this one off on a Wednesday afternoon after work, just around 5 o'clock. Seems like kind of a weird time to start off a devlog, but I've been on a bit of a break recently. Since I started working from home, I'm actually doing my job from the same desk where I sit to work on my games, so it's been kind of hard to transition between the two right before or after work. But now I'm feeling pretty settled in, feeling motivated, so we're going to hop in and try to make some more progress. I wrapped up the last devlog by showing what is basically the most simple form of combat. Right now you have crabs that'll follow you around if you get close, and you can attack and destroy them with a couple of left clicks which execute what I'm calling a primary attack. What I would have liked to get to but unfortunately didn't in the last video was the notion of a secondary attack, a different type of attack to accompany the primary attack. However, I did manage to actually complete work on this during the last week or so off camera. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that and describe the difference between the two attacks. We'll start off with the primary attack here. And I know you guys have seen this a bunch, but I really haven't described its purpose very much. The primary attack is really meant to be a melee attack. Very short range, not too much damage, and ultimately free to cast because I'm planning to introduce resources here in the very near future that the player will consume with certain attacks. In addition to this, I've also added the functionality to stop the player when casting this primary melee attack. This does a couple things. It kind of limits the mobility of the attack, which I think kind of helps balance it a bit. And it also helps the attack projectile get a little bit further out in front of the player. So this is the primary attack. Not too useful, but something to use when you're low on resources. Next up is our brand new secondary attack. And what you're seeing here is really just a test, not so much of a finished product. And of course, bear in mind that I'll have many different primary and secondary attacks that you can find and equip throughout the game. What's important about these secondary attacks is that they will cost a resource to cast, they will be much more powerful, and they'll generally have a higher cooldown. Um, you'll also notice that the player can cast a secondary attack while he's moving, which is a nice little bump to mobility. The whole point of this design choice is just to create a more dynamic combat experience, where sometimes you'll want to be casting less powerful attacks to build up resources, and other times just release bigger barrages of these magical attacks to do huge burst damage on enemies. I need to tweak it a bunch, but I think this will be a really fun way to play. Now apart from all that combat stuff, the only change I made in the past week was to animate the water as you can see here. Now this needs a ton of work, but this was something you guys kept pointing out in the comments and I did want to learn about Unity's animated tiles. So went ahead and learned how to do this and for now I'm definitely happy with how it looks. So yeah, I think that was a nice touch. In this episode we're going to work towards wrapping up this basic combat milestone. I only have three tasks left and to be honest I'm really excited for all of them. Tonight we're going to kick off things with working on enemy health bars, but ultimately we're going to move on towards enemy defeat and loot. I'm not going to talk too much about those yet, but I will say that creating a loot system for Dauphin is one of the things I am most excited for because that's something that I enjoy most in a lot of the games that I play. But I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm going to kick off work on enemy health bars now and I'll catch up whenever I have some progress. Good morning, folks. As you can see, my work on the health bars from last night has spilled over to this beautiful Thursday morning. It's about 6.30 a.m. right now, and I think I've got everything finished up. All right, so here is our very simple health bar, and as you can see, it's about as plain as it gets right now. That's okay, I'll go back and make it more aesthetically pleasing later. Right now, I'm just concerned with the functionality. So to see that, we'll go ahead and hit play and head down to our beach scene. First thing you'll notice is that the health bar is not actually showing over the enemies, and that's because I've made it so that you have to damage the enemies to show the health bar. I think that's a pretty common convention for games like this. Other than that, it functions just as you'd expect. Every time we damage the enemy, the health bar is updated with the new percentage of health. If you're curious, the controller for this component is dead simple. If you followed Bracky's tutorial, you should have a slider component somewhere inside your prefab, and the way that you change the value on that is just to set the slider value directly. This is really the only public API I'm exposing here. So, really easy to implement. It is creeping up on 7 a.m. now, and I'm trying to get a workout in around 7.30, so I'm not sure I have time to pick up a new task here. I think what I'll do is just go grab another cup of coffee and relax, and we will catch up when I'm ready to work on enemy defeat.
Good morning, folks. We have made it to the weekend. It's been a very nice, rainy, lazy Saturday morning for me, but it's going on about 9.30 now, so I'm getting geared up to do some more work on Dauphin. Before I do that, though, as you just saw, I made a bunch of progress on that enemy defeat task yesterday morning, bright and early, so we'll take a look at that first. Towards the end of the last devlog, when I was showing how we could finally attack enemies, you may have noticed that I chose my words carefully. I didn't say that we were going to be killing the enemies, but just defeating them. As you can see, when I now go to attack enemies and their health reaches zero, the kind of blue and green toxic color melts off of the crab and the crab is no longer aggressive towards the player. The idea behind this is that rather than killing or harming the sea life, we are removing a corruption from it. A corruption that is applied from a currently unknown source, but definitely a source that you will end up finding as you play the game. I'm really excited about this design choice. I love the idea that you could be sailing across the ocean, happen upon a brand new island filled with corrupt sea life, and after exploring that island and battling the corruption, you're left with a place full of colorful, peaceful, non-aggressive sea creatures, and an island that's basically been restored to its natural state. From a technical standpoint, there is of course still a ton of room for improvement with this system, but for now it gets the idea across, so I'm pretty happy. I think I'm ready to move on towards the last task of this milestone. This final item is of course the loot system, and I've been excited to work on this one for quite a while. What I'm envisioning is some kind of component that I can attach to my enemies that will allow me to define a drop table of items that the enemies can drop when they are defeated. Let's jump into it. Alright guys, it is just about noon now and I have been like heads down coding for two hours. I got completely lost in all this stuff. Turns out there's a ton of different ways to implement loot tables and I am very picky about the way I want mine to work. That said, I did get something very basic working so it's probably worth taking a look. The most important part of this system for me was that the loot table be a component that I could attach to any of my enemies that I design as I'm working on Dauphin. So if we click on my sand crab here, you can see I have a loot table component attached to them. If I expand that, you'll see that I have control over the number of entries in the loot table and actually some granular control over the probability weight for each entry. It was really important for me that I be able to go into the inspector here on the enemy itself and define specific weights for specific items within that enemy in the inspector. I want this to be easy to change as I'm playing the game. Each entry here in the loot table expects to have a loot item, which is a game object with a loot item component. I wanted to be able to use components here so that I could pretty much take any game object that I've already created and turn it into a loot item. I've already created this sand crab shell fragment thing, which is just a very quick and dirty example of something that can be dropped. And you can see I've attached a loot item script to it here. So if we go back to our sand crab, open up the loot table, and I can drag in the shell fragment here as the loot item. I think this is a pretty cool design choice because it means I can take items that I didn't even design to be looted and add them to a loot table. So we'll go ahead and do that with my little stick weapon that the player has been wielding. I can add a loot item component to that. Then when I go back to my sand crab, I can increase the number of entries in my table and drag the weapon here into the loot item. I can also change the probability weights for each of these. So if I want the sand crab shell to drop more often, I can increase this probability weight. All right, let's take this thing for a spin. The way I configured the crabs, they should mostly drop shell fragments, but if I get lucky, maybe like a one in five chance, I should be able to get a weapon drop. First two drops are the shell fragments, as you see there. Go ahead and keep slaying some more, and hopefully I will get a weapon drop. And there we go, the fourth kill dropped that weapon. That's pretty cool. As you can see, the system is assigning the probabilities correctly, and although we're not doing anything fancy to spawn the dropped items, it does seem to be working. This is great progress, but in my opinion, not quite enough to call it complete. I'd ultimately like to add a nicer animation for when the loot actually drops, and maybe even some glowing effects based on the rarity of the loot. And of course, the drop table system itself could be extended much further to support things like multiple drops, which it doesn't right now. That said, I think this work is just going to have to wait until the next episode. I'd love to get this out to you guys tomorrow, and I've just been working all morning. It's a gorgeous day outside, so I think Kate and I will be taking a walk, grab some curbside lunch, and maybe some household essentials to enjoy on the porch later. Sorry this one's on the shorter side, but overall I have to say I'm really happy with the progress that I was able to pull together in just the past three or four days. As always, thanks so much for watching and for your support. If you're enjoying the development of Dauphin, consider subscribing to see what I'm working on next. 
Stay safe out there, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.